on a festive Sunday morning. The gentlemen are all in a dither this morning. I don't know if there's some in the air today. My husband was in a rare mood this morning, too. All right, boys. Just kidding. <laughs> so <Settle down. laughs> He's my mom voice in church. Um, so let's uh, start the service this morning. With any prayer requests or any testimonies anybody would like to share this morning? Yeah, Roberta. Um, <clears throat> so thank you for your prayer and It looks like the situation with my cousin is partially resolved. The debt has been paid, but now the relationship part has to be restored. Uh, so continue prayer for that. But I appreciate the prayers for the whole thing. Um, also, prayer for Kelly for a safe trip to Cedar Rapids. She leaves today, comes back either Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, and for her dad because he's, going, he's undergoing our procedure tomorrow. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out if uh, there's anything wrong with his heart, so it's uh, more of an exploratory type of thing we're going to do, but just that the doctors don't find anything that uh, healing 100% completely covered. Uh, and prayer for me, I think I'm undergoing some stress because I have this eye twitch that was bothering me all past week and I thought it was because of a presentation I had to give him work at work on Friday and after that was done he went away and then it started back again yesterday <clears throat> so I don't know what it is but just for peace and, and calm and for revelation what's going on so that I can pass it out <clears throat> okay. Anyone else this morning? Any prayer requests or testimonies? Yeah, Tim. Yes, I, uh, I want to thank the Lord for uh, the kind of situation we had uh, the other day. It was come out of going into the store, and one of the guys when I first started being that truck driver, he was one of my teachers. We had to uh, uh, go do some training. Uh, and, and he came out of there. He, he was uh, probably there in the middle of seven. I got an order, but the thing that struck me, you know, I said, you know, I said, told hi, and the thing that came out was just, I want to thank you for teaching me, you know, because I think it's so important, those people that helped you along the way, because I've been there 11 years now, and how patient and understanding he was with me, and I was so glad I was able just to see him and tell him thank you, because I think people need to hear that, for what you, what they've done for you.
But she reminded them that one day, all the things you don't believe, that you don't, she said, there will come a day, I guarantee it, that you will take your last breath. And then you will know positively if it was all below me or if Ann Brown was right. And I thought, what a way to leave it. I mean, she didn't condemn them. She didn't blast them. She just told the absolute truth. And I thought, that is the response we should give. You can't jump off. Right. Because they are in them. They are the very ones when Jesus hung on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them. Yeah. They don't know what they do. Right. They, they, honest to God, do not know because they don't know God. Right. Right. So we, instead of, and I'm, I, you know, many times, I'm right out there, if I had the stone, I'd probably <laughs> think about throwing it. But, yeah. but that is not the thing to do. Right. You know, at least that's what Jane tells me. <laughs> How about just a little bit? <laughs> One won't kill anybody. Just leave them. Especially the drivers. I wish I had a box full of them and draw them. But anyhow. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. There is a lot going on in our world right now that just is stirring the pot and is. It feels like that agitation is just bringing to the surface the light and the darkness in a grosser degree, whether which side it's on. The, d the divide is, we stopped at my aunt's last night to visit her. She's been having gallbladder issues and is waiting for an infection to be gone to get it removed surgically. And, and there was a thing on CBS about these kids that are, you know, um, creating this, you know, movement, right? The movement, the you know, against guns and, and gun violence and violence in the schools, which is not a bad thing that they're against it. But I just couldn't help but think there was not one adult in that whole place to guide them and give them wisdom. And I was reminded of the scripture that talks about how the sons will be above the fathers and condemn the fathers. And anyway, um, young people are scared and the things going on in our schools are serious. And I just want to remind us to pray. Pray for wisdom. Pray for... Um, those young people that know the truth to speak up mm -hmm. and that um, yeah I just, that the Lord will have his way yeah. I mean yeah. yeah these kids yeah. making up celebrities yeah. I know the hypocrisy is just un mm -hmm. almost unbearable mm -hmm. the very people that are producing all of these films all of the graphic violence murder and mm -hmm. on a mass scale and then they want to stand up
had that, we went to Heartland and we, you know, went, had that whole day there. You know, the whole theme was be light. It was be light. And so I really feel like that's what God is telling us to do. He's telling us to step out of this dark and closed box. Yeah. And he wants us to be the light yeah. and be strong. And it's going to be super uncomfortable and we're going to have to press in. But that is just so, you know, that we can rely on him to do what, you know, to give us the strength to do what he is calling us to do. And this is the time. This is the time with all of these children so confused with what's going on and just yeah. wanting to follow the whole, you know, herd mentality. Well, they're doing it, so I'm going to do it. Yeah. Without even understanding what they're standing up for. They don't have any idea because they don't have what we have. Right. And we have what we have because we know who we are. Right. And it's up to us to pour that out on them. Right. And, you know, I can understand their point of view, not that I would do what they're doing, but I can understand their point of view because they're scared. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're in fear. Yeah. And they're being pushed, you know, on some agenda that they don't even realize they're being used for. And so I really feel like we should be praying for discernment for yes. these children yes. to be able to decipher between the good and the evil. But yes. we have to be that light. It's our time to do that. Yes. And he's calling us. He's, he's calling us to yes. do that. Yes. And I've been saying for months that the earth, the earth is groaning for us to yes. know who we are and the power that we have. Yes. We have all power and dominion yes, over the earth. Yes. And so it's time for us to stand up be the light, and be who we were yes. created to be. Yes. So there was a second change. There was a song, um, that song, More Love, More Power. I got my old Matthew, De my, um, Michael W. Smith worship CD out, <laughs> the old one. I dusted it off. And it's that song, More Love, More Power. And I thought, there's no more love and no more power for him to give. We have all of the Godhead dwelling mm -hmm. in us. And I was like, Lord, where's the power? Ephesians, that is the, we've been praying Ephesians for, what, 15 years now? It, we have the revelation, but where's the power? And so I've also been praying about fasting. I don't know if anybody else has been, the Lord's been talking to you about fasting, but I'm just going to plant the seed, pray about it. Um, unfortunately, I believe that I'm going to be fasting words. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be very good at that. Yeah. But the Lord's been talking to me about silence. Yeah. Because from silence, our words have power. Yeah. And when we choose to be silent, our words have more power. And if we are careful with our words, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I use a lot of words every day. But if I <laughs> am selective and I silence myself, and I choose to only speak truth, and I yes. choose to only speak life and light, yes. then maybe I'll be more aware of the power that I give away every day from my own mouth. Glory. The power that I just yes. yield to my members and I give it to my flesh. Yes. I want to blame the enemy all day long. It's not the enemy, it's my tongue. And it's my mind that needs to be renewed. It's my heart that needs to be pure. And I need to reconnect my heart with my tongue. Because yes. out of my heart flows life. Yes. Out of my heart flows resurrection power. Yes. Out of my heart that is connected in one with my God flows light and life right. and love and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Right. And it just takes just a second for us to forget. And we just throw all of our power away yep. through the words that we speak. And so the right. Lord has just been dealing with me about the gate. We're the eastern gate, right? But boy, I don't bridle my tongue near enough. Just throw away my power with my words every day. And so, I don't know if that resonates with anybody, but it makes me a little sick to my stomach to think about fasting words. James, yes. As I speak of this stuff, God's been speaking to me today, and I don't know what love, listen, Observe, visualize eternity. And if that doesn't say a seen bit, that's what I'm thinking. If we don't start listening and visualize and listening to other people and observe, how are we going to learn from that? Yeah. Yeah. The Bible's speaking to us. And yet, I'm sitting on my bed, my dog lays there, 
to be light, to be salt, Lord, to be life in the darkness, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, help your people to have purpose and vision, Lord. We thank you for answering the prayers that were shared this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to, to meet old friends that sowed seeds of life into our lives, to say thank you to those who have been a blessing, Lord. We thank you for the resolution of Roberto's family, Lord, and we ask those relationships be reconciled. We lift up Kelly's father, Lord, and Kelly as she travels, Lord. Be with them in that situation. Let the doctors find nothing, and let it be a good report for Kelly's father. Lord, as we gather today, Lord, as we gather together, Lord, as we gather together to lift you up and to worship you, Jesus, have your way today, Lord. Reveal to us, Lord. Renew our minds, Lord. Plant the, the seed of your word in our hearts. Let us put a gate over our mouths, Lord, and not steal the power that you place within us, but to choose to speak words of life, 
choose to speak words of love, of power, Lord. Jesus, have your way in this service this morning, Lord. Those who come with a need, Lord, you know that need, Lord. That you encourage, that you reconcile, Lord, that you make a way where there seems none, where you that you move the mountains and cast them into the sea, Lord. That you bring healing where healing is needed, Lord. That you bring prosperity where there's lack, Lord. That you bring reconciliation where there is division, Lord. Lord, as we cast aside thoughts of this day, thoughts of this world, the troubles in our heart, Lord, we lay them at your feet, Lord, and we enter into your house, this house of prayer. We gather together to worship you, to receive your word, and to be transformed into your image from glory to glory. Jesus, thank you, Lord, that you have finished the work, Lord, now that we just simply walk in it. Lord, have your way this morning, Lord. We make room for you today, Lord. We turn our eyes to you this morning, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Bless everyone here in the name of Jesus. All right, just a couple announcements. Just a reminder, if you brought a cell phone this morning, please turn it off to the end of the service. And we are still seeking a couple helpers in the sound booth. Uh, we've had a couple people step forward to do scriptures on Wednesday nights and on Sundays when, when we have a need. So still need help with the soundboard. And we are still seeking help with Sunday school. Sarah has graciously offered to help with the youth downstairs. So thank you, Sarah. Anybody else um, that would be interested? I think we're going to go ahead and just do one class for a little while, combining the older youth with the younger, sorry, older children, to come back with us. But it's into the fold. And just a reminder to let go and let God. In Jesus' name. Um, let's see. Toby and Don, you two want to come take an offering this morning? <clears throat> Lord, we're thankful, God, to be here today. Be with your people, Lord. Give you praise and honor, Lord. God, we just thank each and every day we stand in the truth of your word, Lord. It is our everything, God. We believe it, we live it, God, we release it each and every day. Now, Lord, we just ask that you would be here with us in the remainder of this service, God. Also, Lord, we ask that you would bless this offering. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
show all that. Not only is he wonderful, but so are we. Yes. Yes. This is the realm of your glory. This is the realm of your grace. I can feel your mighty power. It is moving in this. 
Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. This is the realm of His presence. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He has come to dwell among us and in us. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. We bless you this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you, worship team. Great job. Praise the Lord. Appreciate it very much. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God. The Lord is good. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I went to the doctor this past week and uh, he asked me what my problem was and I said, my wife's snoring. And he said, well, does it disturb you? And I said, it disturbs the whole church. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, <laughs> hallelujah. Praise God. We're just relaxed a little bit. Amen. God's good. Amen. He's in a good mood all the time. Praise the Lord. Merry heart doeth good like a medicine, he said. Praise the Lord. Butcher gets married. So he took his new wife to a party. He wanted to introduce her to his family and to his friends. Meet Patty. It's really bad, I know, but it's, it just kind of grows on you. Praise the Lord. That was sizzling strong. <laughs> Thank you, James. <laughs> Praise God. Man's addicted to drinking brake fluid, and he said, It's okay, I can stop anytime. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to identify the actual originator of these, so and it wasn't me. But hey, it's good. It's worth repeating. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Well, I'll stop. <laughs> Praise God. It is Palm Sunday, and uh, you know I I'm not gonna. Although I'm preaching Jesus, I'm not speaking to that directly, although I will make reference to it, but everything here is about Jesus. Everything, if we're teaching or preaching or learning anything at all, we should be learning Jesus. We should be learning more about Him and not just facts, not just uh, religious um, rituals and so forth. But uh, with that in mind, I'd like us to begin at Philippians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. And I taught some uh, from this uh, on Wednesday, not what I'm teaching today, but just from this, just use this scripture, because uh, I think sometimes we forget, and again, this isn't my, necessarily my topic this morning, but that we are spirits, and we just happen to be in a body, but our identity is as spiritual beings, and uh, when we forget that, we have a tendency to drift back into the Adamic kind of nature, and, and uh, we can't do anything there other than what everybody else does. So it's been spoken by several this morning already, but it's, it's our consciousness, our awareness of our, who we are in Christ, our spiritual reality, that makes it possible for us to 
bring heaven to earth, to make the, what, what we call the miraculous take place here in the natural. The miraculous is just a suspension of the natural laws, uh, or you could say just a, an overpowering of spiritual laws of those natural laws, right? I mean, the natural laws are in effect uh, in, in the natural realm, but everything in the natural realm came out of the spirit. So if you get a miracle, what it is basically is a spiritual law overwhelming or overpowering yes. a natural law. Yes. So in order for us to dominate in this world, we have to operate from the spirit. Otherwise, we're subject to all the natural laws. We're just subject to what, whatever comes our way is what we got to deal with, right? Mm -hmm. So he says, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. The concision is simply the Jews that were preaching uh, that you had to be circumcised, the ritual uh, of, of religion, because he immediately responds or, or continues in verse 3, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Praise the Lord. So our confidence has to be in the spirit. Can't be in the flesh. The moment we place our confidence in the flesh, we're setting ourselves up for failure and for a lot of disappointment. Amen? If you will, Sheila, drop down to verse 8 and we'll read verses 8 through 10. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know Him, and the power of His resurrection, and the fellowship of His sufferings, being made conformable unto His death. Praise the Lord. So, the most uh, disappointed people in the world are people that have turned to what they thought was Jesus, and ended up getting religion. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. They walked down an aisle to get rid of their burdens and their sorrows and their shame mm -hmm. and just exchanged them for a bunch of others. Yeah. Not knowing that Jesus came so that we could have a door or an access into the kingdom of God. Right. That's a... a, a, a an access, an avenue of approach, amen, that's not based on our human labor. That isn't based on our sweat or our performance or our behavior even. It's based on the door that Jesus is. The revelation of Himself. The reality of who He is, amen, and our relationship with Him. It's not a revelation of some historic event, but it's a present reigning of Jesus Christ in people. That's what He came for. That's why He died and rose again, so that His Spirit could come to dwell within us and not just hover over us or move on us as it did under the Old Covenant, but that it could, God could literally become one with us, that we could be united to Him. Amen? So a true revelation of Jesus is to experience the King's kingdom. Amen? A true revelation of Jesus is experiencing the kingdom of God. Amen? Not just one of these days after I live a long life, I'm going to go to heaven. Amen? This is about experiencing the kingdom of God because that's all Jesus preached while he was here. Amen? Let's look at Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. And of course, whenever we operate from religion, it's easier to dumb it all down to duties, to things that you got to do and behaviors that you have to follow and so forth because it's simpler. It's simpler in the sense that it's there for the carnal mind to read and see and respond to. The Spirit, if we operate by the Spirit, we have to be led by the Spirit, which means we have to suppress the carnal mind or we have to overwhelm the carnal mind with the spiritual truth. We have to renew our mind, in other words, and discipline ourselves to live by that Spirit, to be led by that Spirit. That's the challenge and that's what true Christianity is. It's relating to spirit, spirit to spirit. Amen? Yes. That we are now spirit beings, that that spirit dwells in us, and he's what leads us and guides us into all truth, not our intellect, not our ability to be better than the guy next to me or 
or somebody else or whatever. But it's about being led by the Spirit and understanding that that in that dimension is where all the power is. It's where all the authority is. Yes. Yes. Chapter what? 9, verse 9. Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Praise the Lord. All right, John 12, verses 12 through 16. John 12, 12 through 16. So this is obviously Zechariah's prophesying of the coming of the Lord. Because we hear the, the, the exact same words are, are spoken uh, amen. In, in the New Testament, in uh, Jesus' uh, approaching Jerusalem, amen, on what we now call Palm Sunday. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat there, sat there on, as it is written. Fear not, daughter of Zion. This is just a quote from where we just read. Behold, thy king cometh sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. Now, because I don't, I'm not, I could go, I could turn there right now, but I'm not going to. But just for the sake of time, it goes on to say that the, uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious rulers of that day cried out, make them stop. Because they understood the prophetic word. They understood that, hey, they're making him their king. They're saying he is the Messiah. Yes. And they, did, they didn't want that. That was what they were against was the fact that they knew when he comes, this uh, temple system isn't going to be around long after that. We don't need the sacrificing of animals. We don't need this religious hierarchy anymore. We have one person to answer to, and that's the king. That's the Messiah. Amen. And he's going to take away the sin of the world, so our whole sacrificial system is going to be done. They knew that, and that's what they were against. Praise the Lord. Well, what happens right after that, it says, And the Greeks who were there in the, in the area, uh, near the temple and so on and so forth, uh, because this is a high holy day. They were, in fact, they were coming up on a, a, a high holy day, which was actually when he was crucified. And so he, uh, there, there are all these Greeks there, and, the, and it says these Greeks wanted to take him. Now, recognize, here's what Jesus is doing. He's saying, we got to get this thing rolling. I, I have to be crucified. we got to move this thing forward. And why? Because if the Greeks, Gentiles, were wanting to make him their king. And it wasn't their time yet. You see what I'm saying? It couldn't happen until his death, burial, and resurrection. There was only a couple of times in the scripture where he ministered at all to Gentiles. It was, you know, even to the woman, he said, you know, let's not meet to give the masters uh, uh, bread to the dogs and so forth. And meaning that he, it wasn't their time yet. He had to die. The Jews had to reject him before he could turn to them. And that couldn't happen until after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Amen. So Jesus' time for the Gentiles hadn't come yet. It's the same thing that he does when he starts in his teaching and parables all the time. I've said, I talked about this here a while back. The entire Bible is symbolic. It's types, it's shadows, it's symbolism, it's uh, metaphors. It's, but it's all talking about Jesus. And we, through, you know, if we're, if we're really looking at it through the eyes of the Spirit, we begin to see those connections. Yes. Where otherwise, if we're just looking at it through the through the eyes of the flesh, it just looks like a bunch of rules and a bunch of history and a bunch of different events that took place over time. That's really not what it's about. And that's why when we get to the book of Revelation, which is not what I'm preaching this morning, but that's why when we get to the book of Revelation and try to take it literally, it makes absolutely no sense. Because it's, a, it is, it's, it's described, defined as the, not the revelations, but the revelation of Jesus Christ. Well, that's what the entire Bible is. So when you get to the book of Revelation, you just have this, this kind of condensed version or synopsis of everything that you've been reading in the Bible. And if you don't see it that way, then it becomes this bizarre thing about huge insects and, you know, weird leaders and, you know, marks and tattoos and all kinds of other stuff that it really are symbols that are types. 
that if you look at the scriptures, you'll see they're just being played out. They're just being defined more clearly when you get to the book of Revelation. Praise the Lord. So, Jesus, you know, he, he's, uh, he's, talking, he's talking in parables. And why does he talk in parables? He's, and this has always baffled me. And he, sa he says, the reason I teach you in parables is so that only those that have ears, or in other words, only those that are listening spiritually are going to be able to understand it. Because I don't want Gentiles, I don't want anybody, for that matter, getting saved, you know, trying to approach God through the Spirit and tell my death, burial, and resurrection because there'll be confusion because they don't have the Spirit yet. And yet they could, if they, if they began to discern, it's kind of like, you know, he said, you know, we've got to confuse their language, you know, back in the Old Testament because nothing will be withheld from these people. They've got a brain. They'll, figure, they'll start figuring stuff out. They'll start putting two and two together. So that's what he's talking about when he says, uh, I I teach, I'm teaching in parables, so only you, you that are close enough that have seen these metaphors that are beginning to understand what they are because you've been the closest to me and I've been explaining stuff to you, will understand it because I'm not going to, I don't want to make uh, people think that salvation is, is uh, available yet. Because when Jesus was teaching, they were still under the old covenant. They were still under the law. They were still under the, the covenant of Moses. There was still all the legalism and the rituals and all that stuff that had to be dealt with. Yep. He was fulfilling all of that. Yes. And for him to, to, to bring this thing sooner than it was supposed to would have upset the entire thing. It would have, it would have screwed everything up. So that's what, that's what he's actually talking about, okay? So, uh, Luke chapter 17, verses 20 and 21. Luke 17, uh, 20 and 21. So, I'm saying that so that when we look at these things, we look at them from a spiritual perspective, regardless of how we've been taught. And then you can just, you know... You don't have to take my word for it, okay? So you can go out of here and just say he's just nuts or he's just, you know, throwing stuff out there because he's trying to be different or something. But, but, you know, I just challenge you, go back to the Word of God yes. and see what God says about it. See how he deals with you about it. So when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God comes not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, if you just look up the, the word kingdom in, in Webster's dictionary or any regular dictionary, it's going to say it's the power of a king. It's what a kingdom is, a power of a king or a realm, a domain, a kingdom sphere, a spiritual realm of God. That's what the kingdom is. And that's basically what Jesus says right here. He's demanded, he said, when's the kingdom coming? And he just says, well, it doesn't come with observation. It's not something you're going to see. It's not a geographic location. It's not a building. It's not a, you know, territory or, you know what I'm saying. It's not like Camelot. Right. Neither shall they say, lo here, lo there. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So he's telling us right off the bat, this is a spiritual. This is the realm of God. It's a spirit realm. All right? So the kingdom of God is not coming from observing religious rituals or trying to legislate righteousness. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 11. For when the full, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because we are sons... God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So He, he sends, we get born again, what does He do? He sends the Spirit of God so that when the Spirit comes, we immediately identify with God as our Father. That, that never happened. That's one of the reasons why the Jews hated Him so much is because He was always saying, My Father and I are one, My Father, My Father, My Father. That, was ne that wasn't language that any Jew would use. In fact, they wouldn't even say the name of God. They wouldn't even write the name of God. So they, the last thing they would have identified with was God as a father. So therefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Howbeit then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are not gods. 
But now that after ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Praise the Lord. So Paul's saying, this is the whole reason Jesus came, was to get you into this spirit kingdom, into this spirit realm, and He's made it possible for you to be in the spirit realm where you and God are connected now, and, and yet you want to go back to making it about rituals. And the truth is, all of Christianity has done this to some degree. Praise the Lord. So what Jesus and Paul are saying is the kingdom doesn't function by rules and regulations. The kingdom doesn't operate that way. The Holy Spirit governs, amen, the kingdom. In fact, He is the kingdom, you might say. In fact, he, you could say it. And grace and faith are the currency that's used within the kingdom. Praise the Lord. So... Look, if, we're, if you don't want to use grace, if you don't want to use faith, you're not going to function in the kingdom. I don't care how much you pray, how much you fast, how much you do good. It won't work. That is right. And that's the thing, that, that's the paradigm shift. That's where God is trying to get us to because until the body of Christ recognizes this and begins to operate this way, we're not going to see the fulfillment of the prophetic word about Joel and, and uh, the book of Acts, even the greater works that we will do. And in the last days, these things are going to happen. Right. They'll happen. In the last days will just be further down the road. Praise the Lord. It's going to happen. It's got to happen because it's been prophesied. The question is, when will it happen? It'll happen when the people become aware, when the people begin to rise up and begin to fill the earth, where God begins to fill the earth, where a revelation of God or a re revealing of God begins to fill the earth the way the water covers the sea. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. So, uh, the Holy Spirit governs. The kingdom isn't geographic because the kingdom of God is in you. Amen. See, if we could, if we could just, if we could ever get to the place where we really believe that the same Spirit, the same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead, lives in us. Resurrection power. The greatest power that there is. We, we can raise the dead. We, we have the ability if we believe and if we function in our capacity as Spirit-filled, Holy Ghost, born again, children of God, we can raise the dead, but they're still going to die. Amen? But we have resurrection life in us, which means we never die. Our spirit will never die. Lazarus was raised from the dead. And what did the Jews do? They wanted to kill him because he was raised from the dead. They, and they could still kill him. Jesus can't be killed. He was resurrected. Amen? And that's what we have, resurrection life in us. It's awesome. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's the power that he called, they, the, the scripture calls the power of an incorruptible life. Yes. A life that can't be corrupted. A life that can't be killed. A life that can't be destroyed. A life that can't decay. Right. A life that's eternal. A God life. Yes. That's what we have in us. Yes. Praise the Lord. That, that life, if we will function in agreement with it, in coordination with it, it will cause us to rise up above every situation, above every circumstance, above anything that the enemy or the natural world tries to put against us. Because when it functions the way it's supposed to function, we see what we call miracles. They're only miracles to our carnal mind. They're the most natural thing in the world for a spirit to be operating in. Resurrection power. You have resurrection power. Look, if you, if you can resurrect the dead, in other words, bring something that's, that's uh, temporary at, it, at best, 90, 100, 120, whatever years, if you can raise that from the dead, that's one thing. But to resurrect it so it can never die, so that it can never... That's power. That, that means that if you understand that, healing is nothing. Right? right? I mean, financial breakthrough is nothing. All of these things that we have made, these great mountains, Jesus said, if you understood, you would say to the mountain. Yes. And what it was the mountain? The mountain was the religious system that kept them always in subjection, amen, to their flesh. 
not connected to God. Right? I mean, that's what he was saying. He was on his way to Jerusalem, and he had just cursed a fig tree, which represents Israel. And he said, if you'd say to this mountain, and he was talking to the temple, the, 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 the whole system, amen, that they had been operating under for all of these years. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Okay, so he says repent. Repent means to think differently. Why would he say that? Because the Jews had only had a one-track mind, a only one way to think for centuries, for millennia. And it's the legal system. It's the, it's the, the law. Yeah. It's the, the sacrificial system. Yeah. So he's saying, look, Isaiah prophesied about this coming. And in order for you to receive what's available, you're going to have to change the way you think. Yes. And I'm telling you, if the Holy Spirit's saying anything to the church today, it's saying the same thing. Repent. And we're running and crying and asking forgiveness for stuff that we've been forgiven for a long time ago. Not re recognizing this isn't about feeling sorry about something. It's about changing our mind. Amen. About the way we approach God and the way we operate. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm not saying we should live like heathen and be immoral or anything else. And you know that. So I don't, I'm not going to qualify it all the time. We already know. But the Spirit, this grace will, ch will change us yes. in ways that we can never change ourselves. Because if we could have, we would have. And we wouldn't have need Jesus. We wouldn't need Him to have died and been crucified and, and raised again. If it was possible for us to do it ourselves. He came because it wasn't possible. He came to be sin for us. Amen. He that knew no sin. For us who had no righteousness. Praise the Lord. So, reconsider. Think it over. We, it's easy for us to look at the Jews and say, Gee, what idiots. Why did they get it? They didn't get it because they had thousands of years of a religious tradition and system that they were scared to death to step away from. And the same thing happens in Christianity. We've had teaching upon teaching upon all kinds of teaching by well-meaning people but it was still wrong. And now we're so paranoid to deviate from anything that's already been established because we're afraid of what? What are we afraid of? Yeah. A God who has died and gave himself for us and wants to have a relationship with us? Right. See, the kingdom of heaven is literally just a mind shift away. Just a change of thinking. Because you already got it. It isn't a question of you having or not having the Holy Spirit or, or having the kingdom of God. It's a question of being aware of it, being conscious of it, being able to uh, utilize it. Religion has made us totally dependent on individuals. That's what the Old Covenant did. It made you dependent on the attitude of the priest, uh, your rabbi, the, the religious system itself. When God always wanted it to be Him and them. Yes. And they said themselves, we don't want that because you, you freak us out. So make Moses, give us somebody, an in, a, a mediator, somebody to go in between us. God didn't want that. That's what they asked for. That's what they chose. It, it, if you could say it, I mean, you could say it from a human perspective, it hurt God that they didn't want to have that oneness with Him. That he'd have to use mediators. He'd have to use somebody else, a prophet, uh, somebody to always go. Through. We do the same thing. We're under a new covenant. And we do the same thing. We're always looking for somebody to validate us. Somebody to give us what we've already got. Somebody to, to lay hands on me and give me this thing and answer my problem. And, and you are the answer to the problem. The kingdom of heaven is within reach. Amen. It's available right now. If you can change the way you think, 
you'll access it just like that. And when you access it, you access all the benefits that go with it. This is the inheritance. This is the joint heirs with Christ. Children of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. 1 Thessalonians 2, 12 and 13. Praise the Lord. That you would walk worthy of God who hath called you unto His kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, you received it not as if it were the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Praise the Lord. So, when he says walk worthy, you know, I'm, I know because this is the way we've been programmed that immediately we think if we, can just, if we can be perfect, we'll walk worthy. In other words, we'll do stuff that will make us worthy. That isn't what he's saying. He's saying walk in the truth. Walk in. That's how you walk worthy. The way you walk worthy is by understanding who you are and what your worth is. You, you have invaluable worth. So much so that the God of heaven came into flesh and died for you. Yes. That's walking worthy. That's acknowledging, amen, this great thing that he has done. Yes. Amen. And if you do that, he says if you do that, this, that's what he did to get you to his kingdom and to his glory. So it's for this cause also that we thank God without ceasing because when we receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you received it not as though it was just my doctrine or my particular interpretation, but you received it and you said, that's the Lord and I'm going to operate by that because it's the word of God. Okay, so praise the Lord. Heaven will invade earth, amen. Whenever we get there, whenever we believe that, heaven will invade earth. The same way heaven invaded earth when Christ came into this world. Yes. All of a sudden, there's multiplied millions of Jesuses all over the earth. The glory that he talks about here will fill the earth. Yes. See, don't miss the present reality. Like, I don't see the forest for the trees. That's kind of where we're at. You know, that's where we've been. That's right. The present reality is that He is God with us. Yes. In us. Yes. Through us. I mean, it sounds so simple. It sounds like, God, we know this. We've heard it so many times. But think about how we operate, how we function, how the body of Christ functions. I'm not talking about individuals. There are some. And all of us, to some degree, kind of waver in and out of this. You know, there are times when we kind of get all hyped up. Why? Because we've heard from the Lord. Because we've been listening. Why? Because we've got a crisis. When we, this is the way we are to walk our life all the time. Because it's not just about what I'm going to get out of it. It's about what God can do through me as much as what He can do for me. Because he, whatever He does through me, it's going to affect me. I mean, I'm a, I'm a benefit from it, no matter what. Amen? So John's message was, it was more than you just need to get saved. His message was abundant life. Yes. Abundant life for the here and now. Yes. A life to be lived in the kingdom of God today. Yes. In this realm, in this life, in this reality. John chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. John 3, 5 through 8. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You've got to be born again to enter the kingdom. Well, that makes sense based on what we already know, because unless you have the Holy Spirit is the kingdom, so unless you're born again, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Right. So this is what Jesus is talking about here. He's not just talking about getting saved. He's talking about the kingdom, which is what he did. He went about preaching the kingdom of God everywhere he went. So Jesus answers this rabbi and he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. 
Praise the Lord. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it listens. Now he's talking about the Holy Spirit. And you can't hear the sound of it, but you can't not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Now what did he say about the kingdom of God? You don't know where. You can't see it. It's not physical. I mean in the sense of fleshly physical. And that's what he's saying here. You, you, you can see the effects of it. The wind blows and you see the trees. But you don't see the wind. You just see the effects of the wind. The Holy Spirit's the same way. You don't see the Holy Spirit. You see the effects of the Holy Spirit. You don't see the kingdom. You see the effect of the kingdom. That's what healing is. Again, it goes back to what I said before. It's a suspension of natural laws. So you see, that's the kingdom of God. We just experienced the kingdom of God because the natural laws were just pushed aside. A healing took place. Somebody got a breakthrough financially that should have never happened in the natural. Praise the Lord. So the gospel of the kingdom is misunderstood. Every other message comes from the umbrella of the gospel of the kingdom. That's why Jesus went about preaching the gospel of the kingdom, not you've got to be born again. That was a response to somebody asking, how, and what did he say? In order to enter the kingdom, you've got to be born again. The kingdom's the message. The being born again is your access to it. It's through Christ. That's the, the message he's trying to tell us is, you need a kingdom, man. You need a, you need a different yes. realm to operate in because this one will kill you. Yep. This one will keep you bound. This one will keep you in, in prejudice. This will keep you in hatred. This will keep you in variance. It will keep you in greed. It will keep you in everything but what you're supposed to do and who you're supposed to be. Right. You need a kingdom. Yes. You need the kingdom you came from. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, the gospel of salvation is just a part of the gospel of the kingdom. Because, it's because of the gospel of the kingdom, it's through your new birth that you enter the kingdom. That's why he's talking about being born again. We make it all about being born again. And you've got to be born again. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying the reason for being born again is so that we can get into the kingdom where God, where God operates, where the Spirit operates. It's not to get born again so you can go to heaven a hundred years from now. It's so you can get into the kingdom today and begin to operate in an abundant life, in the, in the God life, in the heavenlies. You see what I'm saying? We, because we're flesh, because we don't renew our mind, because we don't uh, think spiritually, we always dumb it down to the lowest common denominator, which is the flesh. So we make it about stuff. God, give me a car. God, give me a, you know, a this or that. It's not wrong. We, he knows we've got to have this stuff. That's what he said. I know what you have need of. But he said, seek the kingdom. Seek the kingdom. And the stuff gets added. You'll, the stuff's not a problem if you'll function in the kingdom. If you'll operate by the kingdom, the stuff just comes. It'll just be there. It'll be available. And we're, we're fighting the system. We're bucking the system, in fact. We're fighting against us. We're, 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 we're struggling against ourselves. Yes. Trying to get stuff. We are. <laughs> Amen. And calling it spiritual when it's carnal. Because yep. if I do enough stuff, then God will owe me the new car. Right? If I do enough stuff, then I, he, He's got to give me a bigger house. Right? Because I'm deserving. Do you see what I'm saying? He, and he's not against the car. He's certainly not against the house or anything else. He knows what we have need of. But he said, consider the lilies. They don't toil. They don't spin. And they're clothed better than Solomon with all of his millions. What is he saying? That we all want to dress in flowers? And we tried that in the 60s and it didn't work. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, what he's saying is God takes care of them. If, if you consider them, they just rest yes. in their Creator. Yeah. And He takes care of them. He clothes them in ways far more beautiful than anything we could ever produce. Right. Romans fourteen seventeen. This again, here's a scripture that I've read God only knows how many thousands of times. 
and never really put two and two together. Not that I didn't see it. I see it, but I see it with my natural eye, so I never connect it, never connect the dots, you know? Right. So for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom is in the Holy Ghost. And in that kingdom is righteousness, and we know that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. If we understand that we're in the kingdom, there's peace. Why? Because we're not toiling to try to make stuff happen. We're resting in the kingdom that God has supplied all of our needs through. Amen. There's joy. You can have joy even when you're not happy. Praise the Lord. That's, that's, we're talking about two things here. We're talking about the natural and the spirit. Joy is a spirit. It's a spiritual thing. Yeah. Happiness is natural. You've got to, stuff's got to happen for you to be happy. Right. You know, and that's why it's like this. Yeah. You can be happy. You can get up happy, and before noon, you're not happy anymore. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you have joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. They, you, they, you can't take joy away from somebody. You might rob them of their happiness by stealing their car or, or killing their child or, or injuring them or doing some physical thing to them. You can take away their happiness. But the joy of the Lord, even when you've got all kinds of junk happening, you can still have joy. It's not the giddy, <laughs> oh, everything's great. No, it's that deep, settled, somehow, it's going to be better. This isn't the end. This isn't the final word here. Amen? Praise the Lord. Righteousness, peace, and joy. It's located in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God, he said, is in you. He said it's with you. Because Jesus was there. The kingdom was in Him. But He said, it shall be in you. But He had to die first. He had to be resurrected. The Holy Spirit had to come back. He had to come and dwell within us. Praise the Lord. The moment you were born again, you were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Same as the Holy Ghost, same thing. Praise the Lord. The kingdom is where you went the moment you were born again. Yep. Praise the Lord. Yep. Matthew 9, verse 35. Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and what? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. That's what He did. You could go all through the gospels and you'll find that's what He was doing. Everywhere He went, He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Why? Because that's what happens in the kingdom. Yes. He preaches the kingdom. The result is healing. Yes. Prosperity. Yes. Bondages are broken. Devils are cast out. Yes. That's just the natural. That's the normal in the kingdom. Yes. So not only did Jesus do these works, He commissioned us to do the same thing. Praise the Lord. Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. Jesus always said, The kingdom of heaven is like, or the kingdom of God is like. He never said, The kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is going to be like. He said, It is like. It existed. It was there. It, it was a right now thing. Yes. Amen. Mark chapter 4, verse 11 through 14. So see, this goes back to what, what I was saying earlier of why he taught in parables. Because people are manipulative. I mean, we know that they are. Remember the two guys that saw, they saw Paul casting out devils? Sons of Siva. What do they do? They try it. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. They didn't have the ability to do it, they, but they tried anyway. And what happened? Ripped their clothes off, beat them to pieces, and left them laying naked in the street, bloodied. The devil said, Paul I know. You know, Jesus I know. Who are you? Praise God. He said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, that are outside of the covenant, all these things are done in parables. That seeing they may see with their natural eye, it's called carnal for them, right? And not perceive. And hearing they may hear 
and not understand. Now remember, Jesus breathed on these disciples. They, didn't have, they weren't filled with the Holy Spirit, but they had a, a tremendous Holy Spirit influence. First of all, because Jesus was near them, was with them, and they were seeing this, but also He breathed on them and sent them out to function as though they had the Holy Spirit in the anointing. In other words, they took the kingdom out. So that's what he's talking about. That seeing they may see and not perceive. They'll see it with their natural eyes, but they'll never get it spiritually. And hearing they may hear with their natural ear and never understand it. Lest at any time they should be converted and their sins would be forgiven them. It's not supposed to happen that way. Praise the Lord. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? So he said, Do you understand this parable? If you understand this one, then you'll know all the parables. In other words, if you understand the, the spiritual teaching, the way that I'm teaching spiritually, not just this particular thing about the seed, although that was absolutely true. He's saying if you understand the spiritual reality of this natural thing I'm telling you, amen, then you'll know everything that I'm talking about. You'll understand everything. It won't be genealogies anymore. It'll be a revelation of Jesus. It'll be a revelation of the kingdom of God. Because that's what he's telling us. Okay? So here's the, here's the key. The sower sows the word. Yes. In the kingdom of God, the only way it functions yes. is by the word of God. It will not function by your hard work. It won't function by your effort. It won't function by how good you are. It'll only function one way, and that's by the word of God. Yes. If you try to work anything else, it will fail. That's why you have to stay faithful to the word of God. That's why you have to confess what the Word says. I don't care what the system or what the problem is. I got them. You got them. All God's children got them. Amen. We all got stuff. But there's only one way to fix it. Whether it's my problem or your problem or your problem or your problem or your problem. Or your problem and whatever that problem might be, there's only one way. You got to get out of this system into the kingdom system. Because... In the natural system, you are subject to whatever the natural laws are. The hardest working person wins. The early bird gets the worm. The one that stabs quickest lasts longest. You know what I'm saying? So it's cutthroat. It's, you know, do this and do that. And, you know, uh, the harder you work, uh, the, the more successful you can be. Nothing wrong with hard work, but you, there is a way that we can rest in God and it doesn't become hard work for us anymore. It can be a joy to get up and go do the thing. Because God is with you. You're, you're operating through the kingdom. Yes. Amen? And that's what he's trying to get us to understand. You've got to use this or it won't work. So don't tell me, don't give me your excuses because they don't mean anything to me. That's right. I, it's not that I'm not sympathetic, but I've already been down this road for too long. Right. I mean, I've had to go through everything everybody else goes through. I'm not a martyr. I'm not special. I'm just, you, until you figure it out, you're going to have to deal with it the other way. That's just how it is. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. You can keep doing things the way you are, but don't, don't complain to me. Because you're going to get what you're saying. It, this is not the, it's, it's not the, uh, what's, what do they call it? Word of faith ministry. That's not what this is. It's the kingdom. Yeah. It's the kingdom. Yes, somebody's identified it as that, and they may have used it and manipulated it and maybe, yeah. maybe tried to, you know, work it for their system or for their ministry, just like some people who claim to be a prophet do that. And I mean, there are all kinds of reasons. You can't, I'm not, I'm my, my problem is not trying to figure out whether they're legitimate or they're not legitimate. The problem is if it's the truth, we need to do it, whether, regardless of how much it's being twisted. And it is, but it's, it's got to work. This is Jesus talking. This isn't me. This isn't somebody else. You know, this isn't just somebody that's come up with a weird idea. The sower sows the word. Yes. In the kingdom, this is how it works. He, we just read that. Yeah. All right. So look at uh, verse 26. And he said, so is the kingdom of God. Not so shall it be someday, but so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. He's already told us what the seed is. The seed's the word. So the kingdom of God is you take the word and you sow it. 
Sow it where? Into wherever it's needed. Wherever it's needed. For whatever is needed. In other words, if, you, if you're wanting a, a, a harvest of cherries, you don't plant apple trees. Right? So if you need a financial thing, you're sowing the Word of God concerning finances. Yes. Amen. And that's what will eventually will produce it. Yes. Just like seed doesn't pop up in 30 seconds, you probably won't get your answer in 30 seconds. Especially if you keep digging it up by saying something other than that. Right. In other words, if you're, you're saying... No weapon formed against me should prosper. Every tongue that rises in judgment because I got critics, you know, okay? If, if I'm, if I'm going to be able to condemn those that are condemning me or show them to be wrong, mm -hmm. then I better stay consistent with that confession or else I don't have any real power. It's going to be their wisdom or their be better lawyer or more money that's going to end up putting me behind the eight ball. You see what I'm saying? If I got a physical ailment, like I said, when I had hepatitis C, I learned some of this stuff, not because I'm such a brilliant person, but out of desperation, you'll start doing some desperate stuff. Yes. And when it works, you find out, okay, why did that work and that didn't work? Right? Right? Because right. you want consistency. Yes. The consistency is every day I quoted the same scriptures. He sent his word and healed me and delivered me from destruction. By his stripes I was healed. And on and on and on. A half dozen or so scriptures that, that were specifically for healing. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. No matter what. Wouldn't even talk about it to anybody else because I didn't need their negative. No. Even though they meant well. Oh, uh, how's this working out for you? I mean, uh, what the doctors say? I, I don't, nobody even knows because I don't. I got to fight this thing myself. And the more I gang up on it by getting your information, the harder it's going to be. Doesn't mean you're evil. Doesn't mean you don't love God. It doesn't mean that. It just means that I can't depend on you being operating in faith when it's about me. I got to depend on me operating in faith. And the best way to do that is isolate myself if I have to. From anything that doesn't agree with what the Word of God says. I'm not picking on anybody here. I'm not saying you're all that way. I'm just saying. When you. You know what I'm talking about. You get in a place where it's, it can be life or death. It can be whatever. You got to get results. And at that point. You're not as worried about personalities. As you are about getting results. Praise the Lord. So. Verse 30 through 32. I'm not being harsh. I'm, be, I'm being honest. Yeah. I know this works. Yes. But I also know you've got to work it. You have to be faithful to it. You cannot do this for a week. And then because you don't get results, start saying it doesn't work. Yes. You just sowed your own yeah. results. You just yes. dug up the seed to see if it was growing yet. Or said, it's not growing. And yeah. it's fulfilled prophecy. He said, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we make it? It's like a grain of mustard seed. Again, it's a seed, right? Which when it's sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. So your faith can be so minuscule. Yes. But it's enough. Yes. If you'll sow it. Yes. And you'll stay consistent with it. It will grow till it comes uh, this huge tree. Amen. Amen. The herbs and shoots forth out branches so that the power of the air may lodge in, just in the shadow of it. Praise the Lord. So the kingdom is available. The kingdom's at hand. It's within reach if you'll change your mind. Stop depending on your ability. Stop trying to, you know, it's like, it's like uh, Thomas. Jesus said, uh, you know, the Thomas said, I, I, I'll believe it if I can see it. That's what half of the church is calling that faith. That's not faith. That's the that's natural way of operating. Right. Give me results and then I'll believe it. It won't work that way. You're not going to get the results. If, it, if, it, if you do get results without faith, it didn't come from God. So the deal is, he says, uh, Thomas, come here. Stick your hand in my side. Put your finger in the nail hole. And Thomas is my Lord and my God. He believed, right? Now, who was Jesus talking to when he said, blessed are you for believing? I'm getting ahead of myself, but you can catch up with me later. 
or I'll try to make sense. He's talking to us. Blessed are those who haven't seen but and yet believe. Now, remember that I said that because in just a moment we're going to get to this idea of what that really what he's really talking about. See, they saw him ascend. They saw him going away. He said, the way you see me going is the way you're going to see me coming. So all of this, he's, he's tying all this together in that one statement that, yes, you believe. You believe because you've seen me. You believe because you've got results here. But more blessed are these who have not seen this, but they're going to get a tremendous blessing, a greater blessing even than you have because they believed without seeing. Okay, so... We have to start trusting in the Word and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 11, 11 through 14. So verily I say unto you, among them that are born of woman, there, are, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So he said out of, all, out of the Old Testament prophets, out of everybody who's described throughout the scripture none of them were any greater were greater than John but he said when it comes to people that are operating in the kingdom people holy spirit people he's the least kingdom of heaven is greater than he and from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence what does he mean you, they struggled to get the spiritual realities the spiritual truth but they didn't have the spirit so the kingdom of heaven suffered violence what does he mean he means they they violently struggled to get this thing. But it was impossible for them because the Spirit hadn't been poured out yet. Right? And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. And if you can receive it, this is Elijah, which was for to come. So he said, he is Elijah. And we know that. He talks about it over and over and over. The different Jews would say, is this Elijah? Is he Elijah? Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're this. And some say you're the other. Okay? So, he that's least in the kingdom is greater than John. Now, let's think about this. This is God's opinion of you. He's saying, you are greater than any Old Testament prophet. In fact, you are greater than all the Old Testament prophets. And we want to be an Old Testament prophet. You know what I'm saying? We want to call down fire. We want to, you know, do the stuff. And he's telling us that's, that's nothing compared to who you are. Which tells me we are not functioning, amen, as we are created to function. So we've been made new creations in Christ. And we're no longer under the curse of the law. We don't have to take the kingdom by force. We have received the Holy Spirit. We aren't waiting on the kingdom to come. The kingdom dwells in us. The kingdom exists in this realm because of us. The way it did because of Jesus. Matthew 17, 10 through 13. Praise the Lord. Matthew 17, 10 through 13. His disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elijah must come first? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall come first, or first come, shall first come, and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Right? So Luke chapter 1, verse 17. And he, he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So what was John preaching? Repent. Change the way you think about religion because he's making the way possible for this resurrection of the Lord and how all of these lives are going to be so dramatically tra transformed. So they're going to be changed. They're no longer going to be under this sacrificial system, under the whole ritualistic thing of religion. All of a sudden, now it's going to be they have a relationship with God. 
Think it's hard for us. Imagine what it was like for them. Mama and daddy and daddy and grandpa and grandma and grandma. And it wasn't like some were Baptists, some were this, some were this, and next year somebody else come along and they, they went with that. No, these were Jews all their generations past. That's all they knew. It was their whole life. So John the Baptist was the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies concerning the coming of Elijah. The point that is... Jesus is trying to show us or to reveal to us, I believe, is that if John is Elijah, then Jesus is Elisha. Right? He's the forerunner. Elijah. Right? I'm not going to do it for the sake of time, but you can go there. First and Second Kings, read it. It's all about Elijah and Elisha. It'll give you all the information you want. Amen? And here's what happens. Elijah is pulling down. Elijah is plucking up. Elijah is pronouncing judgment. He's calling down fire from heaven. Who are you going to serve? You know, I mean, that's Elijah. That's what he does. He's got this ministry that is... If you're not on board, you're in trouble. It's destructive in a lot of ways. You know what I'm saying? The ministry of Elisha is healing the barren land. You read it. Go back and read it. Putting salt in the water to heal the water. Causing the oil to multiply for the widow woman. It's, it's uh, raising the dead son of the Shunammite. He removed death from the pot, right? There was poison in the stew. He removed death from the pot by putting meal in it. The bread of life, you know what I'm saying? So he cleansed the, uh, Naaman, the leper. Elisha sounds like Jesus. Cleansed lepers, raised the dead. Bound up the broken hearts. Here's the deal. Do we know what spirit we are of? Because Luke chapter 9, verse 52 to 56, and you don't have to go there, Sheila, for the sake of time, because I'm trying to get down here at a reasonable time, is where he says that the disciples, they got some flack. This is what Don was talking about this morning. It's what all of us have kind of talked about a little bit this morning with all the issues. and The disciples got some flack from people that they tried to minister to. And he, they immediately, they said to Jesus, now the forerunner Elijah had come, but Elisha had not received the mantle yet, right? I mean, Jesus is still alive. So they're saying, shall we call down fire on him? Now they know they got some power because yeah. they've seen the heal, healing the sick and casting out demons and everything else. And Jesus' response was, you don't know what spirit you're of. So you're still, you're still, Identifying with that old covenant, that judgment, that get even, that payback kind of mentality. So let's let's do this. Go to Second Kings, uh, chapter two, verses nine through fourteen. Second Kings two nine through fourteen. So it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, now they've gone over the Jordan River. He asked, what, what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee? And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, you've asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven and Elisha saw it. And he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And he took up the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also... When he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elijah went over. Praise the Lord. So, a transfer of mantle, right? It took place at the Jordan. A double portion falls on Elijah. All right? So, Jesus saw John, Elijah, taken away. Right? His disciples came and told him. He, he was in prison. They killed him and so forth. John represents the Old Covenant. So, John even said, I've got to decrease. He must increase double portion. He's, you know, he's going to be way more powerful and so on and so forth. 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 16. 
2 Kings 2.16. They said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. This is after this has happened, and these are the sons of the prophet. There's 50, 50 of them, and they're saying, Hey, uh, we know he went somewhere. We don't know where. Let's, let's go find him. Right? So let's go, we pray thee, and seek your master. They're talking to Elisha. Lest peradventure the Spirit of the Lord have taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And Elisha said, you shall not send these guys. In other words, don't go looking for him. All right? Here's the deal. The 50, right? He says there were these 50 strong men. Those are the sons of the prophets. 50 represents Pentecost. Amen? And instead of looking for, see, we're supposed to be looking for the Holy Spirit to move. Instead of looking for Elijah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Instead of looking for somebody who says they're a prophet, somebody who says this or does that, we're supposed to be operating by the Holy Spirit. And yet we're running all over trying to find the prophet. We're trying to find Elijah. When we've got Elisha. The double portion. We've got the Holy Spirit. We've got everything we need. And we're out rolling. And, he's, and here's what Elisha says. Don't. His, his purpose is fulfilled. There's a, there's a better way now. These are not the days of Elijah. These are the days of Jesus Christ. These are the days of the kingdom of God. These are the days of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The mantle was passed from Elijah to Elisha, from John to Jesus. Yep. Old covenant to new covenant. And now, it's gone from Jesus to us. Yes. And that's what he's talking about when he says, blessed are those who have not seen. You're going to see me go away. You saw me go away, and now I'm back, and you can touch the scars, and yep. you, you saw what happened. But more blessed are those who didn't see this resurrection, yep. who didn't experience this in the natural, but have believed. Yep. There's a special anointing. It's the anointing itself. It is the anointed one. It's not a mantle. It's not a rabbit's foot. It's not some talisman. It's God himself. Matthew 3.11 And I indeed baptize you. This is John, right? He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Praise the Lord. Remember, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Jesus baptized us into the kingdom. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost. When you got born again, you became a citizen of the kingdom. Yes. You were placed into the kingdom. And we're still trying to operate like we're natural people, which is why we get natural results. John 14, 12. Just about done here. 14, John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. The mantle. Yes. The double portion. Greater works than these you'll do. Praise the Lord. Yes. See, it all makes sense if, you look, if, if we just look at it in the context that he's talking about it. John 16, verse 7. Last scripture. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the Comforter can't come unto you. But if I depart, I'll send it to you. See, i got to go so that I can leave the mantle, so that you can have the greater portion, so that you can do greater works. His mantle, His Holy Ghost. i got to go away. Otherwise, I can't send the Holy Ghost. Can you see what, I'm, what we're saying? Praise the Lord. Not only has He ascended, but He has raised us up together with Him and seated us in authority in heavenly places at the right hand of God. 
you don't need to get in a prayer line to receive somebody's anointing. You have received the anointed one. Let them get in line to you. I mean, you know, we're, that, we're not promoting that. That's why I don't specifically pray for people. It isn't that I won't pray for you, because I will. But what you need to understand is, I don't have anything you don't have. Why would you think that because I pray for him, something's going to happen that wouldn't happen if you did it? That's diminishing God. That's shrinking God down. God is right here. All of this is right here. If we make it about me, you've just shrunk God down from 20 people to one. Now he can only be where I am. Now he can only do what I'm doing. The anointed one is in us. His mantle has fallen on his body. You receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, the scripture says. See, the deal is, he has restored the kingdom. He's not going to. He has restored the kingdom, and he's done it through a people that are full of the Holy Ghost. Christ in you. It's here. Yes. We're not praying it down. No. It's already down. It's in us. We just have to release it. Yes. But to release it, you got to know you got it. Yes. you got to believe in everything that God is saying about you. Yes. What your value is. What your worth is. He loves you just like Jesus. Yes. As the Father hath loved me, so He loves you. Whatever he did for Jesus, he'll do for you. The difference between us and Jesus is Jesus knew. And he acted on that knowledge. And we're still hoping. And as long as we're hoping, it's going to be in the future. It's got to be settled. It is finished. Just act on it. Not based on how good you were today. Not based on the thoughts you had or the behaviors, but based on his finished work. Based on him telling us that we are greater than any Old Testament prophet. Think of the miracles and the, and the signs and wonders that took place throughout the Old Covenant by these old prophets. Here's the, here, I'll just leave you with this. Just thought about this. When, when, uh, remember when Elijah, he was a double portion. You count the, those miracles. He was one short, really, of twice what uh, Elijah had done. Well, there was a battle, and uh, this guy died. One of the soldiers died, and they threw him in a cave. And I don't remember the name now, but you can find it. It's in the book of Kings. And they threw his body into this cave. And Elisha, they were looking to bury him because they didn't want the enemy to dig him up and, you know, mutilate his body or, or defame it and so on and so forth. So they threw his body in there. And the dead man jumps up and walks out. Praise the Lord. Jesus' death brought life to our dead spirits. We are alive in Christ. Amen. There's no limit to this. I mean, there's just no end to it. We just, we've got to change the way we think. And it, you've got to discipline yourself. You've got to just quit giving in to your flesh, to what your thoughts are telling you, or to what the banker or the doctor or whoever. You have power. You have authority. You have dominion. But Sally and I, we talked about this the other day, not this specifically, but it's, it's, all, it's everywhere in here. He said an heir. It's still an heir even if he's a kid, even if he's just immature. But he doesn't get the benefit of being an heir. That's the church. We are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus, but we're not experiencing the benefit of it because we've been immature in the way that we've approached the Scriptures. We keep thinking we've got to grow up. What we've got to do is wake up. We are full grown. We were born into this thing full grown. If we would just... And Paul, he tries to tell him. Jesus even said, it. There's, there's things I'd like to tell you, but you're, you're not ready for it. You're not... You're not you, you wouldn't receive it. Paul does the same thing. He said, I'd like to give you meat. You, you need to be eating meat. But he said, you're still sucking on a bottle. And, and if I give you meat, you'll just choke on it. You won't be able to receive it. You won't take it. You won't get it. 
You see what I'm saying? And that's that's where we're at. It's it's time to yes. put up the bottle. It's time to get out the meat. You know, it's time to start carrying around a steak knife. Praise the Lord. Instead of one of those little plastic spoons. We, we just, we got to do this. I, I, want, I want to experience this in my lifetime. I've got some promises from God too. And, and look, they're not going to happen. If we keep doing things the way we've always done and we're going to get the same results. And I'm, I'm, I've had enough of that. Yeah. I'm not just interested in being religious for 35 or 40 years. I want to see the manifestation yes. of God in my life and in the community that I live in, in my family, and in, in all the things that, you know, that we have. I want abundant life. And I want it here and I want it now. Wow. Yes. Seek the kingdom. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, make this a reality in our lives. Yes. Quicken it to us every moment of the day when we're, when we're confused, when we're frightened, when we're intimidated, Lord. Bring this to mind. Remind us, Lord, of who we are. Quicken your spirit in us that we might experience resurrection life every single day of our life. And we believe that You will because we know that You died for us to have this, Lord. You paid the ultimate price for us to experience this reality. And we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God.